All right, YouTube, I had a closer look at my head gasket and my head, and it turns out that my head gasket was leaking. In a previous video, I mentioned that I was having problems with my head leaking. I thought it might just be the sealant that I was using, but uh, X2s, SXs, Kawasaki 650s basically do have this issue when you bump up the compression quite high. Um, I only know that from reading about it, not from experience. But uh, if you look at my gasket, you can actually see that there are burn marks, heat marks in between the combustion chamber or the squish band and the water jacket. So especially around, well, no, all of them. I'm going to set up the head in the mill. First, I'm going to set it gasket side down. I'm going to machine off all of these surfaces to make sure that they're nice and level and clean. I'm then going to put it up on blocks this way. And then I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to use a tool to cut an o-ring groove, essentially. I'm calling it an o-ring groove and I could potentially use an o-ring in there. I might in the future end up using an o-ring. But what I plan on actually using in the short term is a piece of copper wire. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, is use a tool with a fairly large radius. I'm hoping that I can use this one. And I'm going to use a fly cutter in the mill. I'm going to adjust it out and basically cut myself a perfect and I use the word perfect loosely. I'm going to cut myself a groove for the O-ring, which in this case is actually going to be a piece of copper wire. I will anneal the wire and either solder it together or overlap it so that hopefully it doesn't leak. Milling machines have what they call T-slots, which you can fit a T-nut into. That slides into the groove. And then I can slide my then I can thread in these studs and then hopefully I can fit these through the spark bolt holes. This video is proudly brought to you by Spark Bolt City. Come on down to Spark Bolt City, we're selling spark bolts all day long. We got a warehouse full of spark bolts for your SX. X2 and other Kawasaki jet skis. Spark Bowl City. That made that really easy. All I need to do now is tighten down these nuts. All right, so we tighten these down. Let's wrap that up. I'll turn this on. Set that to zero. And try to cut them off all at this height. Try to clean them up. Cut this one and then go back and cut this one. Take the tenth out. That brings me down on this one. Hopefully that's as low as I have to go. Unfortunately, I started over here, worked my way around. When I got to the number two one, I had to take off another 10 thousandths to clean it up. So then I had to go all the way back and take 10 thou off of the other ones. I've got to set this up this way. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, this doesn't need a whole lot of support to do this uh, machining process. There won't be a huge load on the head, so I should be able to set it up just like this with a parallel or some sort of block. I'm not sure if this plan is going to work at all, but as of now, the plan is to use a fly cutter just one of these cheap hokey ones and a tool that I actually made a few years ago for another job. I just need to get a rough idea whether or not this is going to work. It's kind of not looking very good. Not looking very good at all. And yeah, nope, not even close. Not even close. All right, so I realized that I have one of these and uh, it's an adjustable boring head, which means I can mount this into the mill like this. It spins around. I'll basically modify this so that it's shaped to cut an O-ring groove. And then I can adjust this tool so that it cuts the right diameter. I have modified my cutter. Where have I put it? There it is. I know the camera probably can't pick it up too well, but hopefully this works. I have no idea. All right, in order to figure out how big of a diameter I want the groove to be, I'm going to measure two things. I'm going to measure the outside of the sleeve, 86 millimeters, and I'm going to measure the inside of the gasket bore, which is 76 and I'll go right in the middle of that. What I'm trying to achieve here, I want to make sure that I'm not clamping down on the aluminum. I want to make sure that I actually have the copper so that it's seated down on the top of the cast iron sleeve. All right, after much head scratching and adjustment, I've got the cutter where I think it's going to work. I've got my wire here and it is 65, 60, yeah, 65 thousandths. So what I'm gonna do for starters is cut 35 thou deep into the head. So I'm gonna to touch off and then cut 35 deep into it and then kind of sit the wire in the groove and see what it looks like. I'm gonna start the mill up, touch off on the piece and then dial in and set my zero. <laughs> I could probably do this just by hand like this and it would probably work better. All right, supposedly I have it slowed down to 350 RPM. Let's see what this looks like. I cut out the second o-ring groove off camera because it was the same as the first one and now I'm stripping some copper wire. I'm going to anneal it with a blowtorch and then shape it to size, cut it to size and basically torque the head down and see if I have proper clearances. I'm going to get the basic size of it figured out. I could just wrap this around the piston. That would probably be the easiest way to do this and then go say half an inch longer. But uh, yeah, as you guys know, I like to do things the hard way. So now I have a piece of copper cut out that can be my seal and it's a bit too long and it's not the right shape. And as you guys can see, it's kind of springy and yeah, it doesn't like to uh, cooperate. So what you need to do is anneal it. So I will show you guys a little demonstration. If I take this piece of unannealed copper and I drop it on the floor, not a whole lot happens. It kind of bounces. I'm now going to anneal this with the torch and then drop it on the floor again and show you guys what happens. 
I don't actually know exactly what temperature I need to bring this to, but I know that doing what I'm doing right now will work perfectly. I've let the copper cool down and now I'm going to drop it on the floor and you guys will see the difference in what happens. It has actually bent considerably. You can see the ends are way closer together. It's way more malleable now and it will be way easier to form to the shape. I can push it in place. Whoops. I can push it in place as almost as though it were an o-ring the one thing that you have to keep in mind if you actually want to do this yourself is that copper does work harden so after you bend it a few times it will no longer be annealed it will harden itself back up and so you only get so many kind of bends and corrections before the material returns to the stubborn form that it was before <laughs> As you can see I have a slight overlap there so what I'm going to do is mark short of that overlap take this back to the grinder and keep working my way closer and closer to fitting these together all right I now have both of my copper o-rings built and I'm going to anneal them once more and the reason why I'm going to do that is to make sure that they comply to the shape of the o-ring groove and squish in nice to the uh, surface of the block when I tighten it down so I'm going to anneal these again off camera and then I'm going to install them and torque it down and show you guys what I'm looking for it's actually assembly goo I'm going to put a little bit of that in the groove to hold everything in place because assembling it without doing this would be miserable and also I don't know if it makes any difference but it makes me feel like it would actually help the copper seat in place because it will lube up the surfaces and let them kind of go wherever they need to go So that is now stuck in place. All right, I've checked the clearance between the cylinder and the head and I got 34 thousandths. So now I'm going to hand tighten this, just snug it up, just to make sure that I don't overcook anything. And uh, yeah, two, three, four, and then I'm going to go back tighten it to 14 foot pounds and then i'm going to go back and tighten it to 20 and then 22. i'm doing it in a lot of stages because i don't want to tighten the head unevenly and damage anything Alright, now I'm going to check the clearance and show you guys why I didn't just tighten it all down in one. And the reason for that is... I now have 14 thousandths. And I'm going to try to check clearance to see what we have. On this side, we've got about 5 thousandths. Over on this side, we have almost nothing. I was worried that the copper O-ring might actually be a little bit too thick or be protruding a little bit too far out of the head and that when I tightened the head down, I would have a gap around the water jackets that I wouldn't be able to seal with a decent sealant. So I've torqued the head down and I've verified that there's not going to be any huge gaps. Basically, the copper has squished enough by torquing it to 22 foot-pounds that I should be getting not only a good seal around the copper, 
but I should be able to seal around the water jackets. So now what I'm going to do is remove the head and take a look at the copper o-rings and verify that they have actually seeded and squished and that it's not damaged to the head or flex in the head. So when I loosen the head back off, the gap should not drastically increase. Basically, it should increase slightly, but it should not return to 34 thousandths. If it returns to 34 thousandths, it means that all of the clearance that I took up was flex and not crush of the o-ring. Good news so far, I'm removing the nuts and I don't see a huge gap between the cylinder and the head, so that means it wasn't all just spring. The moment of truth. Nice. That is a beautiful thing right there. I doubt the camera is going to pick that up, but that is a beautiful thing. Let's turn on the light. It has flattened out very, very, very nicely. That is a beautiful thing, folks. And can we see where it is seating? Oh yeah, we can see a very distinct mark where it is seating. It's in a good location, right in the middle of the cast cylinder liner. There's no more rounded profile on the bottom of the copper o-ring. It's nice and flat, which means it's squished and it's perfectly seated in that groove. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Let's see, can we find the seam? There it is right there. There's going to be an unlisted video linked in the description of this video. Basically, Jason and I from Jet Ski Brothers were having a chat about old Sea-Doo's and uh, he sparked a memory that I had of working on a really old Sea-Doo. I think it might have been in 1969. Anyway, I worked on it way back in 2014 before I was making YouTube videos and before I owned or even had any real interest in jet skis. And so I ended up coming across a few photos and really crappy video. So I threw together a voiced over photo video thing with a few clips. I made it for Jason, but I thought some other people might want to watch it. So if you do, the link is in the description. All right, YouTube, that's just about it for this video. As you can probably tell, I am quite pleased with the way that turned out. I totally expected to have to either recut the O-ring groove or have to use a other piece of copper wire or something. It's nice that that copper wire works out because it is very common. And uh, yeah, I have lots of it. Some of you may have noticed that the O-ring groove wasn't cut the normal way an o-ring groove is cut. It wasn't cut perfectly round or like a half circle, I guess. And this was actually done on purpose. If you look at this photo, you will see that there is actually a shoulder on the outside and a ramp that leads in towards the combustion chamber. The reason for this is that the combustion pressure will actually force the o-ring to seat into place. If it were a rounded groove, there is a chance that it would try to roll out of the groove under pressure. So that was done on purpose. I thought I would mention that before somebody uh, basically said that it was wrong. <laughs> if I was using a rubber o-ring, this might be a little bit too aggressive, but with the copper, it works out perfectly. I made a note for myself to mention that I did not get my cylinders back yet. Tomorrow will be Thursday. I kind of expected to get them back Friday because it was a week wait time and I dropped them off on Friday so that only makes sense. My next video is probably going to be me trying to recut the squish or the squish angle on my head. Even though the o-ring groove turned out really well, this head has been giving me problems with detonation especially on the mag side cylinder for quite some time and it's time that I deal with it. I'm not going to try to explain squish bands in this video because as Josh from Jetski Brothers pointed out in one of his recent unlisted videos, two-stroke engines are really simple but really complicated. 
basically they're really simple if you talk in general terms and don't try to get into great detail. But as soon as you get into detail about any one aspect of them, they get really complicated. So I may do an unlisted video explaining squish bands and why they're so important and what changes between a stock one and once you start modifying engines. But that's going to be in a different video. I'm going to end this one here because I've blabbered on way too long. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.